Uh, mud motor recommendations. Let me brush my teeth. Uh, mud motor recommendations. Built conservatively, period. Point blank, end of story. I was on OMB Mini Bike. The person was asking about an electronic rev limiter for their mud motor. What is a rev limiter? It's just an electric governor. You know, it's a governor that, you know, once you hit a certain RPM, the computer stops the spark plug from hitting. So it misses. It purposely makes it, the engine miss a spark to slow the engine down. Electric rev limiting. I find it curious that essentially you're running an ungoverned engine, yet what you're asking about is how do I re-govern my engine? <laughs> <laughs> you could have just left the governor in. And that's my current recommendation for building mud motors. Leave the governor in. Leave the governor in. Here's the thing that people don't understand. I've said it time and time again. People just don't really believe me. He mentioned the idea that he was just moving along at 3,000 RPM. Okay. And he ran over, he ended up having to jump over a log or ran over a log. And the moment the propeller, the propeller going to come out of the water. I mean, you're... The, these mud motors hit things in the water all the time and the motor and the propeller come clean up out of the water. Well, with an ungoverned engine, he, he went from, he says he go, went from 3,000 RPM to 6,000 RPM like that. It happened less than a second. I can't tell you the number of times I've done that with my ungoverned engines and mud motors. <laughs> And the engine will just, I've, I've had my tachometer, you know, hitting like 7,000 RPM plus. Here's the thing that most people don't understand. It's easy to walk off a racetrack. It's easy to walk off the street while you're drag racing your mini bikes. When you're 20 miles out in moccasin infested, alligator infested, crocodile infested swamps, the motor blows and you're ungoverned engine hitting 7,000 RPM. You have to build these engines as if you are going to be building one of these safari vehicles that's going in the, the, the harshest deserts in Africa or something. You have to think that way. So really mud building a mud motor becomes about building an efficient engine, how to get more out of what you have. Inherent in an efficient engine, I don't mean gas mileage, I'm talking about efficiency. The bang that's happening in that combustion chamber, you're having a bigger bang, that bang, that gas, you're having more fuel and air getting into the cylinder head, burns that fuel more thoroughly and more of the spent gas gets out and you somehow make the engine accelerate faster and not lose as much energy when you're going through hard turns overlanders guys that are literally building trucks to cross deserts efficiency is what they're building for not power it's not a toy it is a wilderness machine designed to get you out and get you back and keep you alive if that's not the basis of your thinking you'll just overbuild the engine and just blow it up it's what i've done twice Broke. Arc rod broke. So here are my current recommendations for building. First of all, always go for more displacement. I built swamp runners. I, I like that. I bought the kit. It was what I could afford. If I could go back and do it again, I would get the medium kit and just get the eight horsepower 301 Predator, not the swamp small kit with the 6.5 horsepower Predators or whatever. Because here's the thing. My personal opinion, the medium, as offered here in the United States, I mean, because we have limited selection, we're not in Thailand, direct, can go directly to the factory and just have all these selections. Because these guys, they can take dump truck engines and, <laughs> and bulk a kit to the dump truck engine. I mean, you want torque, okay, right? We don't have that available to us. There's just no demand for it otherwise here. So if you had a medium kit, here's the size, here's the dis size and displacement you could have. You could go with a Honda, GX240, which is essentially about a 240cc engine, way bigger than a 212. You can get a GX270. 
You can get a GX390. You could get a Predator 301. You could get a Predator 420. You could get a, a, a what is it, what is it, LTC 414. You could get a Duramax 440. You could go with the Vegas carts. They're 440s and they're 460s, and that, they now have something that's over 500 cc's. You can go from 240 cc's all the way up to 500 cc's in terms of engine sizes with the medium swamp runner kit. That's a, that's a lot of options, and that's what you need. And one of the things that you don't have is in terms of the size and displacement with the small kits, basically five and a half horsepower or six and a half horsepower. That's it. You basically got two motors. And I don't know anybody who's choosing the, the smaller one. And so when people decide, nah, I just need a little bit more power, you know, well, okay, it's great to have a little bit more power. And I, I'm happy with the power that my current engine is producing. But I'm not hot rodding it. It's an efficient engine. Because one, you have a much more wide open intake. Reject the carburetor. Much more air and fuel get into the combustion chamber. Bigger bang, drives the piston down harder, more power. Nice exhaust, pulls more air spent gas out, which means I can get more fuel and gas air in. Better spark plug, three quarter horsepower just off a of spark plug change. AR3910X, burns the fuel more thoroughly. Billet flywheel, lighter, spins up faster, but not so light that it loses energy and it, pow it can plow its way and maintain its energy throughout um, a lot of turns and stuff. Plus it has a stronger magnet system that sends a stronger spark to the spark plug, which makes a bigger spark, which means it burns the fuel even more thoroughly. And so you have a six and a half horsepower engine that all of a sudden feels like an eight horsepower engine. Does it have the torque of a Predator 301? No way. All right, the Predator 301 produces like twice the torque of a 212 series CC Predator and it doesn't have twice the displacement yet it does twice the work <laughs> right so you're better off always getting better displacement if you just can't do that then I would just recommend intake exhaust carburetor rejet a good spark plug and if you want get a good flywheel and preferably set the timing perfectly do not remove the governor keep it that's designed to save your engine. The first thing a lot of mud motor builders do is they go look at what the go-kart guys and the mini bike guys do, and it's not to bash them. It's just that they've perfected what works in their environment for their purposes. That doesn't mean it all that automatically applies to building mud motors. And I've had to learn that the hard way by blowing up two motors. These 200cc engines are unbalanced by definition. It's a single piston moving in one direction and you got this moving mass that's moving in the opposite direction. Well, when that crankshaft is at the highest point or the lowest point, you have a very unbalanced engine. And most go-kart and minibike people will never see the sort of vibration and resonance frequencies on land that we see on the water. You know, when they first started building tanks, they said, wait a minute, these are basically sh land ships. These are ships on land, so we ought to build tanks exactly the way we build our warships. Wrong! You know, they used to rivet ships. Well, guess what happens when you rivet a tank together and you get hit by a shell? You turn every rivet in the tank into a bullet! You kill everybody on the inside without actually having to blow up the tank. Just because it works in one arena doesn't mean it has direct and total application in another. You have to adapt it, limit it, expand in whatever ways by more displacement. If you're someone who has a 12-foot John boat or 10 or 12-foot John boat, my recommendation is that you buy the medium kit and get the 8-horsepower 301 Predator. You know, and I'm a big guy, I'm, I'm pushing a lot of weight, you know, I need the extra torque. Uh, if you're a lightweight person and you're not hauling a lot of stuff, yeah, you, you can, and, and I, and again, I am absolutely happy with the power that my current engine is producing because it's just producing a little bit more power at a lot more efficient, right? That's my goal. That's, that's all I have to say about that. See you. Fellas, thanks for watching. Man, check out my class on Teachable on how to convert your mud motor to a marine gas tank with a fuel pump. That's blackwarriorlures.teachable.com. See ya.